This chapter is concerning trying to see the invisible God. This is section one, God the Creator. This is a message on trying to see the invisible God. Almighty God, whom is sovereign of all that exists and will exist, is an invisible God to us. When we search the scriptures looking for the picture of the Almighty, we see many different manifestations to, to focus on. The majority of Christians around the world believe in a manifestation of God called the Trinity, sometimes called the Godhead. This image is displayed in the beginning of the book of Genesis. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Many of the world's largest religions believe in the biblical account of creation, shown in the Hebrew text of Genesis chapter 1. We do not know whether he created a full-grown adult universe that we see today, or created it billions of years ago. The Hebrew word for God in this verse is Elohim. Elohim is a word for God that is in the plural form, meaning gods, plural. The second verse introduces another picture of Elohim, Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This verse introduces the Spirit of Elohim. There are many other verses in both the Old and New Testaments that reflect what is written in John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Elohim is used for the next five chapters of Genesis as the word for God, and more light is given to why the plural form, meaning gods, is used. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and God said, Let us make man in our image, and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when we see the plural word for God, Elohim, shows that there are more than one deity responsible for the creation of the universe, including mankind. As he said, let us, meaning more than one, make man in our, meaning more than one, image. So the next verse reflects the singular person of the plural God, Elohim. Genesis 1.27 So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created he him, male and female, created he them. And his own image reflects that the plural God, Elohim, acts as one person their image as one person. This is also reflected throughout the Bible in many verses, including 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. There, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. In my simple kind of thinking, I look at this manifestation of Elohim as God. As I look through the windshield of my automobile, the windshield was designed to be as invisible as possible so that we can see through it, and yet it is made of three pieces of clear glass laminated together. You cannot tell when one layer of glass stops and the other layer starts. The three are seen as one. While God created us in His image and likeness, one of the Ten Commandments was not for us to make or create an image of God. So, God, by His own design, wants us to believe in and worship Him as an invisible God and not create our image of likeness of Him. Recently, NASA sent up into outer space the Hubble Space Telescope. One of the projects NASA completed was to measure the universe as far as the telescope could see. The known universe, according to NASA, was over 50 billion galaxies. Each galaxy could contain around a billion stars. Some of the lights seen by the telescope traveled for billions of years to this planet before it was seen by mankind. One of the Nobel Peace Prize winners for science researched scientific data and determined that the universe began at one point and exploded outward. This was called the Big Bang Theory. And scientists determined that the universe had to be created and exploded in the same instant or it would have collapsed upon itself from gravity and became a black hole. Science in the Big Bang Theory reflected 
what Genesis chapter 1 of the Bible says. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This scripture could be a summary of billions of years of creation. Or Elohim, Almighty God, could have created a full-grown adult universe like He created a full-grown adult man, Adam. To summarize, what is shown in many of the scriptures, including this one, is this. The Almighty God, whom is sovereign of all, is a spirit. He is the Father of the Word, whom also is a spirit, and is in total agreement with the Holy Spirit. These three are one in agreement, and they are one in record in heaven. All manifestations of God are intended to be invisible and in total agreement with each other. This is similar to the design of a mountaintop telescope. The engineers place the lenses inside to magnify the stars. When you look through one, you are seeing through all of them in agreement. You cannot tell when one starts and the other one ends because the same light travels through all three in agreement. You can focus on the entire sky and the individual stars blur out of focus. Or you can focus on one star and the rest of the stars of the sky go out of focus. If we focus only on the plural nature of Elohim, manifestation of God, and try to keep the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit separate, then the oneness of God goes out of focus. As soon as we read a scripture like this, Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Or Mark 12.29, and Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Luke eighteen nineteen. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. In Galatians three twenty, God is one. Ephesians four six, one God and Father of all, whom is above all and through all and in you all. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Malachi 2.10 Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every one against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Or Mark 12.32 And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but He. Romans 3.30 Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. James 2.19 Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils believe also and tremble. While the New Testament scriptures did not change over the generations, Every generation of Christians since the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ have tried to clarify this picture of God and bring it into focus. The early church tried to bring God into focus with the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed read like this, I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and descended into hell. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This was the parallel to our modern statement of faith found in most churches of today. This early creed worked okay for a while, but it still left many unanswered questions during a time when people were being saved from the idolatry of worshiping man-made idols and gods. They were trying to bring into the Christian faith the image of the idols they formerly worshipped. So in A.D. 325 in Nicaea, the Ecumenical Council formulated the Nicene Creed, which was modified again in A.D. 381 and several other times during the centuries. This Nicene Creed read like this. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is 
seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. He was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in summary, it appears that Almighty God intentionally blurs our vision when we focus too closely on seeing Him, the invisible God. The credit in scriptures for being the Creator God alternates from Elohim, the plural name for God, to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. So by looking at any one of these manifestations of God the Creator, we resolve that they are all the true and correct Creator of all that has been created. We cannot see electricity in a light bulb, but we know it exists because of the light it gives. And we cannot see the electricity in a lightning bolt, but we know it is there because it lights the sky and causes the thunder. The Lord Jesus Christ explains this principle of seeing the invisible God in John chapter 14, starting with verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And we move to verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. It is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. So we have to look at the Son to see the Father. And when we look at the Son, we do not really see Him, but the works of the Father that He does. In section 2, we will focus our telescope on the one God whom created all things.